Good evening. Thank you for joining us in our virtual town hall. Today, we're going to be sharing some information about our revisions to our proposed service modifications for the beginning of 2021. My name is Carson Chambers. I'm Hart's Director of Communications. I'm going to be guiding you today through our town hall. And also with me is Justin Willis. He is our Hart Senior Service Development Planner, and he's going to step in to explain the details of the proposal. Uh, over the past month, we've been receiving uh, feedback. We've received so far feedback from the community, from riders, from our bus operators, and we have made some tweaks to our proposal based on your comments. This town hall will explain route by route each of the changes and why. I want to remind you it's a live meeting, so you're going to be able to ask us questions throughout the presentation for us to answer. And at the end, we're going to have uh, more Q&A time to make sure that you have all the information that you need. Now, here are some tips if you're joining us online today for this live town hall. Uh, if you are online, look to the right of your screen. You're going to see options for today's town hall. Oh, under Q&A is where you can type in a question for us to answer live or send us a comment that we'll take into consideration as we continue to make our proposed service plans. Under handouts is where you can download copies of all the information we talk about today. And when we have a poll, it'll pop right up there for you on your screen and you can click and answer. Now, if you didn't register today, you're going to be in what's called anonymous mode and you'll only be able to watch the presentation. If you're joining by telephone, you won't be able to interact with the poll, but feel free to write down your answers so you can join along. And you can also give answers to customer service the next time you need to call with a comment or question about these proposed service modifications. So here we are, we're gonna try out our first poll. Uh, anytime a poll question like this pops up, simply click on your answer. And our first question is, how did you hear about today's virtual town hall? Did you find it on our website? Our social media channels, did a friend or organization member tell you about it? Did you see our flyer on board of us or at our customer service retail centers? Uh, did a heart staff person tell you about it? Or did you see the alert on our One Bus Away app? If there's another way you heard about it, just click other. And while some of you are responding to this poll, we're going to go ahead and move on. Now, before we start talking about the actual routes, we're going to play a short video. It's going to give you an overview about some of the reasons why we're having to look at making service modifications, which you can, again, watch later if you'd like to and kind of absorb the content on our official Heart YouTube page. So is I'm going to gonna take hand it over to, to Justin Willits. He's going to explain each proposed change. He's going to look route by route, kind of zoom in neighborhood by neighborhood and tackle the uh, feedback that we have received so far, Justin places that enhance their lives. As our community's needs change, we're always reviewing service to meet those needs. Planning is underway for proposed changes in the beginning of 2021, but we need your help. We want your thoughts, your opinions about how those proposed changes could best help you. We have three main goals for these changes. Number one, align service with the needs of the community. We want to preserve as much of the network as possible, especially where service essential workers have been relying on us since March, while also addressing underutilized service pre-pandemic. We're also looking to add service in areas based on community requests. Two, be efficient. We need to improve our route efficiency and we need to adjust our service frequency so we can keep serving you long term. In order to maintain service reliability, we have to be smart about where we operate our buses. And three, preserve funding. With an already limited budget and Hillsborough County having one of the lowest per person transit spending rates in the country, we have to prepare for future uncertainties of the voter approved surtax and the coronavirus's economic impact. Participate in our online meetings, take a survey or send us a comment so your voice can be heard as Hart prioritizes for the future. To learn more, you can visit www.hartserviceinput.com. All right. Thanks, Carson. 
So again, my name is Justin Willits. I'm a senior planner here at Hart, and I'm going to walk you through some of these changes. Um, we'll start in the university area. Uh, we had a few options for uh, what we were looking at in this area, um, but one of the things that we wanted to accomplish was adding service back into the USF campus. Bull Runner is not available to everyone, uh, so we wanted to make sure it's a little easier for employees to get to work on campus. Um, Route 5 currently travels on Fowler Avenue uh, to Bruce B. Downs between McKinley Drive or 40th Street uh, and doesn't have any stops on Fowler. So what we're doing is going to bring that route back onto campus and serve Spectrum Boulevard a little bit differently than the old Route 5, but we'll still get onto campus and we'll have a, a stop pair in the, uh, close to the Fowler uh, intersection, but a little bit further into campus. Um, one of the other things we'd like to do is we're going to return service on Route uh, 48 back to campus along Holly Drive and travel from 50th Street uh, through campus on Holly Drive to get to Bruce B. Downs and into UATC. Uh, there's some other services available on Fletcher Avenue, one of our most frequent services, Route 6. Uh, so we think this is going to be a good connection to get folks from the Net Park Transfer Center into campus and also provide folks with a few options from UATC depending on what part of the campus they're going to. So we're really excited about this improvement. One of the uh, other things we're moving ahead with, uh, we had originally put forward three different options for how to serve the area north of Fletcher. That's one area we've been really trying to restore service to. We've heard a lot from the community since some changes uh, several years ago. And we really wanted to hit the university area CDC on 22nd Street. Uh, and then there were some more uh, nodes and, and land uses we really wanted to hit. Lansdowne, Campus Lodge. Um, so what we've proposed to do here is have a large one-way loop uh, from 22nd Street to Bears and then Livingston to Sinclair Hills over to Nebraska, Bears again, and then Florida Avenue. Um, some of the other changes we've made, like the 20X going away in this plan, removes the very little service that was on that section of North Florida Avenue. So we're replacing it with this service. It was really important to get over to Florida. So that's why we went with the largest one-way loop. Um, so we're really hitting a few of our key areas with this uh, modification, and we think that the community is going to be pretty happy about it. So staying uh, in the university area, uh, we'll look at routes 45 and 42. Uh, we're proposing to split off Route 42 and to operate it just on the one-way loop that it currently operates, but instead of having to travel south from the university area transit center, uh, we're going to keep that as a one-way clockwise loop, and then the connection to the Yukon Transfer Center will now be made with the Route 45. Uh, the Route 45 will now travel on Bush Boulevard, will now go into the Yukon Transfer Center, and will go north on Florida Avenue to Lineball and then 15th Street. Um, we really think this is a great improvement. It'll also provide a connection from the University Area Transit Center all, uh, all the way to West Shore, uh, with a one-seat ride requiring no transfers, it'll be a, a long route, but we feel like it's going to really complete our network and tie together two of our, our transfer centers. So another route in the university area is Route 33 on Fletcher Avenue. Uh, while we are proposing to decrease the frequency of this route from 30 to 60 minutes, we are, we are also proposing to extend it to Northdale Mabry. There are some, a good amount of jobs up there. The Northdale Flex has uh, long been our highest ridership flex route, and we're proposing to get rid of the flex route to replace it with this uh, fixed route service. Um, so we think this is a big win. We know there's a lot of restaurants and a lot of jobs. Uh, so we think connecting with a one seat ride, not requiring any transfers will be a nice clean service from Hidden River through the University Area Transfer Center and up North Dale Mabry. So then, Another route that touches the university area is uh, one of our longest routes in the network, the 275 LX. Um, this route is very long, very resource intensive, and based on some of the operational issues it has, uh, we really think that modifying it to focus where, where the ridership is highest on Bruce B. Downs, um, it was an important place to start. Uh, but we've modified that recommendation to extend it to not only serve the university area transit center to the Wiregrass Park and Ride, but to extend it to keep the piece on Fowler and down to the Marion Transit Center. Uh, we, we really think that 
connecting to Marion Transit Center is important and trying to keep it hourly uh, to provide that cross county route um, is, is really important. We're, we're attempting to serve the downtown to the airport uh, connection a little bit differently with some other routes that I'll touch on in a moment. Um, but we've landed on weekday service from downtown to the University Area Transit Center, up Bruceby Down to Wiregrass. And then on the weekends, we're proposing only to operate this segment on Bruceby Downs between the University Area Transit Center and the Wiregrass Park and Run. So that downtown connection to the airport, uh, we're still gonna serve that with Route 30 at 30 minutes on the weekdays, but what we're gonna do is uh, discontinue the uh, label of Route 35 and make it the Route 30 again. So the routes won't change, they'll just become one route now. So you can travel from the Northwest Transfer Center through the Tampa International Airport and the West Shore District all the way to downtown. And with service to Social Security um, from both transfer centers, as well. So these will be the best connection to get to Social Security in the West Shore District, but also a great connection for the airport and the West Shore Business District at large, as we've seen a lot of residential development and a lot, a lot of activity in the area. So we think this is a more complete service that uh, folks will be pleased with. And we've heard positive reviews from a lot of the folks in West Shore as well. So um, as I alluded to a few moments ago, uh, replacing the 275 LX uh, from downtown to the airport uh, is also important to note that we're discontinuing the 60 LX as part of this plan. The 60 LX really hasn't performed very well. Um, and similarly, the Route 275 uh, has only, I think, a little bit less than 10% of the total route ridership is from downtown to the airport. And what we've learned over the, the years we've been operating it is that when traffic gets really bad on 275, which is a regularly occurring event, uh, we detour those two routes down to Cyprus to avoid the heaviest congestion because Cyprus is actually a very predictably reliable uh, travel time corridor. And what that means is we know we can basically get to the airport in about 25 minutes or so from, from downtown on Cyprus. Um, so we said, instead of having to deal with these detours and the pretty low ridership on this route and considering all the development in West Shore and the calls for improved service in West Tampa, we think we should reallocate those resources down to Cyprus, provide a win for the community, provide a little more consistency to our operators so they're not having to detour as much and really just make it an all around win. One thing to note is that the Route 10 will not be returned to the Social Security administration, since the Route 30 is going to be serving that in both directions, both from Northwest and from downtown, we th feel like this is the right proposal for Cyprus at, at the moment. So uh, we hope, hope that's a big, uh, big win for everyone. And we're pretty happy about it uh, with the feedback we've gotten so far. So staying in West Tampa, um, one of the things we are putting back is the old Route 7 uh, on Main Street and Howard and Armenia. Uh, the old North Boulevard homes that were bulldozed many years ago are now being rebuilt as the West Tampa redevelopment area. And we are really excited. Uh, a lot of those buildings are coming to life. Uh, people are moving in, businesses are moving in. And now we're going to have a really great connection between downtown and HCC still, but we're going to have it operate a little bit differently in between and provide access in both directions for all the folks moving into there and the existing West Tampa community. Um, we'll no longer be serving North Boulevard, north of Main Street to MLK. Um, so there will be no service on that corridor. Uh, MLK will still have the Route 32 between North Boulevard and Howard and Armenia. Um, but there will not be Route 7 service on the, that section of North Boulevard and on MLK between North Boulevard and Howard and Armenia. Or actually just Armenia on MLK. Um, so we really think this is a big win. Uh, uh, West Tampa uh, really has been calling for improved service uh, since a few years ago, and we think that we've, uh, we've tackled that as part of this plan. Okay, so here we're gonna take a brief pause and do another poll. Our next poll question is, um, we're curious, why do you ride heart? Uh, it's multiple choice. You can choose based on what types of trips you take. Do you ride heart to go to and from work? to and from school, maybe ride for leisure or recreation, which means going to places for entertainment and fun. 
Do you ride us to visit health to healthcare facilities, to run errands like groceries and other appointments? And this would be based on how you rode heart pre-COVID in March. We know a lot of people are writing at different times and for different reasons now. We're going to give you a moment here to pause, uh, to think about your answer, uh, to weigh in, and then we're going to move forward, Justin. All right. Thanks again, Carson. So moving on to uh, downtown Tampa, um, I touched on a, some detour issues we had with some of the other routes, but uh, Route 8 that travels from Prog Brandon, Progress Village into downtown through Ebor and the Channel District is also a route that's uh, plagued by detours. It crosses a lot of railroad tracks where we have to stop due to safety concerns. Um, there's a lot of construction on 7th Avenue and Ebor between 21st, 22nd Street and Nuccio Parkway um, and also in the Channel District itself. So one of the things we have recommended and we're moving forward with is formalizing the detour through Ybor City. Um, so traveling down to 4th Avenue instead of 7th uh, between 21st and 22nd Street and Nuccio Parkway or Channelside Drive uh, rather. And then coming down Channelside and then going into downtown on Jackson and Kennedy instead of traveling uh, on Kennedy Boulevard to Meridian down south to Channelside again. Um, we think that this is a big improvement. It'll speed up the connection from the Brandon area into downtown and up to Marion Transit Center. And we kind of want to serve the southern part of downtown a little bit differently, which I will touch on in just a moment. With that being said, uh, we are attempting to serve the, uh, the Channel District and the Water Street area, which is coming to life as well in downtown uh, with the Route 9. Uh, one, the thinking here was to try to connect USF uh, off Bruce B. Downs and 30th Street in the north down with Route 9, what, like it already is, um, down 15th Street corridor, and then come into the Channel District and travel on Meridian to the new connection at Cumberland, which will be opening early next year. Um, there's a lot of new construction there, and this roadway is going to be a new connection. Um, so we're really excited to kind of uh, try something a little different. Uh, connect USF's medical center downtown to the campus up north. Um, and then we would come in on the Marion Transit Way to MTC. Um, part of the thinking here is that the uh, residential property on Nuccio Parkway um, is currently being vacated and redeveloped. Um, and then there, it's the Route 9 on the existing map is very duplicative with Route 12. So there's still a really good frequent connection there to get into and out of Marion Transit Center. So we're gonna try to create a little bit of a better and different connection with Route 9 uh, for USF and our downtown uh, employees. So one uh, small modification, but significant, uh, that we're making to the 360 is to realign it to the Marion Transit Way um, into and out of downtown it really doesn't gather a lot of ridership on Florida and Tampa Street uh, into and out of downtown. And it actually creates a little bit of delay uh, because we're crossing two major arterials that have a lot of uh, green time in the north and south direction. So they're really, uh, really hard to get across in a timely manner, especially during rush hour. So we've just realigned those services to be on Marion Street Transit Way to get down to Jackson and Kennedy as they access the crosstown. And moving on to Brandon, um, this is probably one of the most exciting changes we're moving forward with uh, to initiate service on Parsons Ave. Uh, I've heard Parsons for years and years, and we're finally pr uh, proposing for hourly service for Route 38. Instead of turning around at the Mango Walmart, we're going to continue. Uh, we're not going to serve inside the Mango Walmart. We're going to serve it street side at the intersection there. And then we're gonna to travel to Parsons, down to Oakfield Drive with service to the uh, Westfield Brandon Mall, or Brandon Regional uh, Hospital, and then into the Westfield Brandon Mall. Um, so we're really, really excited about this. Uh, we've heard some good feedback, so we hope that uh, you all are, are, are optimistic about it as well. Uh, moving on to South Tampa. Uh, route 14 uh, was kind of a route without a home in the southern end of the cor corridor. So we're proposing to extend that route from the Soho District south on Howard 
um, down to Beta Bay and then on South McDill to Euclid Ave Avenue and into the Britain Plaza Transfer Center. Um, we're really, really excited to make that a more complete route to better connect the network and now connect Britain Plaza all the way to the Yukon Transfer Center uh, to make it a bit more complete. So we're hoping that's a better connection for our folks and can reduce some transfers and travel time for those folks that are using multiple routes in the network to get across town. So some of the additional changes we'd like to talk about. Originally, we'd proposed to reduce the four core routes in our network from 15 to 20 minute frequency. Based on some scheduling issues and just the way that uh, operations work at a transit agency, we, we weren't able to do that as effectively as we wanted to with a few of the routes and the savings weren't as robust as we would hope. So that kind of influenced how this recommendation evolved. Uh, so we are no, we're gonna recommend at this point, um, moving forward with keeping the Route 1 and the Route 400 at 15 minute frequency during the weekdays. Uh, part of the thinking there was they connect two of our major regional job centers, downtown and USF. Um, and we think we're gonna be able to do that by saving a, a, a few resources, but still maintain that frequency. We're moving forward with Route 6 and Route 34, uh, reducing those from 15 to 20 minute frequency. Part of the reasoning there, like I said, is that they don't serve the regional job centers in the same way as Route 1 and 400 do. Um, route 34 is, is a central uh, Hillsborough County route on Hillsborough Avenue, connecting Net Park Transfer Center to the Northwest Transfer Center. And then Route 6 is, uh, they're both very long, but Route 6 is also very long and requires a lot of resources. Um, so there are a lot of savings associated with those two changes, which is why they have been moved forward in this phase of the project. Uh, moving down the list here, Route 46, we're uh, continuing to move forward with reducing the frequency on that route from 30 to 60 minutes. The ridership has not really transpired along that corridor, and we just feel like it's the, the right thing to do with all of the issues we're facing the moment. Um, routes 24 and 25 LX, we're reducing the frequency. Um, I'm sorry, the, reducing the trips on the 24 LX from five to three uh, in the morning and evening, and then modifying the 25 LX to stagger uh, between the 360 hourly trips from the Brandon area in the morning and evening uh, to make it a little more balanced so you can catch the 25 LX or the 360 every three minutes uh, during the three hours of rush hour in the morning and afternoon. So if you miss one, you can take the other. And it's not that two are right on top of each other as they depart. Uh, it's a little more balanced, a little more predictability, and a little more reliable for uh, people riding those routes. Um, services that are still planned to be removed are the 20X in Lutz and Pasco. It's very low ridership. Uh, it's a historic route that's been around a really long time, but it's just time for us to, to focus our resources on some other areas. Uh, the 75 LX was a Tuesday, Thursday South County shopper uh, that, again, re requires some significant resources and has not uh, been utilized very well. Uh, additionally, the Hart Flex in South Tampa and Town and & Country would be removed. Um, we are planning to keep the South County Flex for now, uh, and the Northdale Flex I touched on earlier is being replaced with the fixed route. So in summary, uh, the 2021 revised proposed service modifications are adjusting uh, the routes, which we've discussed in detail, adding service on a few of those routes uh, in West Tampa, in Brandon and north of Fletcher, uh, reducing service on 275 LX, reducing the frequency on routes 6, 34, 33, 46, and 24 LX, adjusting the schedule on the 25 LX, and then removing service from those we just discussed. So this is a little glimpse of what our new ser proposed service map would look like. In purple, you can see the hourly service. Um, there's a little bit of a description for the limited express routes that are also hourly. And then the orange are the limited express routes that are only for the peak service. And then you can see in dark green, we've got our 15 minute corridors on routes one and 400. In light green, we've got Hillsborough Avenue, Route 12 on 22nd Street, Route 6 on 56th Street, Florabraska, and into downtown. 
And then our 30 minute service network in blue, which makes up most of the map. And then again, those hourly service, hourly services, mostly uh, focused on the periphery and uh, external, you know, ex extraneous parts of uh, the service network. So now I'll pass it back to Carson and we'll talk about next steps. Great, thanks for walking us through all that. Um, now that we have covered all of the proposed service modifications. Before we start to answer your questions, we wanna know what your thoughts are. Um, how do you feel about these changes overall? We put a lot of thought into ensuring we preserve as much coverage as possible while still addressing our current and future challenges. Um, thanks for your answers on that question. We're gonna give you a couple seconds here to weigh in. Um, first of all, today's information can be found on our main webpage at heartserviceinput.com. You can look at that later, or if you think of something afterwards and want to give us your comment on something else, you can also do that at our main webpage at heartserviceinput.com. We are also going to post uh, the recording of today's town hall to watch again. You can share it with people if you like. Um, secondly, we're going to be having our final public hearing on October 7th, uh, both in person and virtually. And then after that Wednesday is when all comments will close. You will um, begin, we will begin creating the final plan by analyzing your feedback. Um, so please go back to your uh, neighbors and friends, your coworkers, your fellow writers, community organizations, help us reach as many people as possible. So everybody has an opportunity to tell us what they think. Now, if our board of directors approves these changes in November, they would go into effect sometime in January of next year. So we've gotten some great questions over the past month. Um, we want to talk through some of them in case some of you are wondering, um, you know, if you had the same question. So the first question that we, we've gotten a lot is how does a five minute difference in frequency help with resources? Um, and to kind of explain that to you, to run the buses frequently every 15 minutes for those core routes, such as Route 6 on 56th Street and Route 34 in Hillsboro, it takes 8 to 10 and sometimes 12 buses running constantly all day. So when we make an adjustment as small as five minutes to the schedule, it will free up anywhere from one to three vehicles on each route. So trimming the frequency on these routes um, that create a minor inconvenience allows us to preserve coverage and other parts to the county, um, so that's sort of a trade-off. Um, another question we've gotten is, why are we doing changes again? We've heard this from a lot of our writers um, during our public outreach. We actually do three serve sort of changes every year. Usually they are are minor tweaks to schedule times, but we also continually uh, take in feedback from writers, operators, the community about our service. So sometimes, uh, like this proposal, we have an opportunity to do some bigger changes to address those requests. Now, there are three main goals that we have for these service modifications. So we're gonna run you through those. Our first goal is to serve the whole county as best as possible while keeping a pulse on changes in population, employment, ridership, and traffic. Okay, we were able to look at which routes were the most and least productive before the pandemic. Then we compared those to the routes that were being used the most and the least since March, okay, after pandemic. So uh, we want to preserve as much service coverage as possible that best serves our community's needs. Um, next, we have to be efficient with our limited resources and continue to focus on safety. Uh, we have looked over the past years, uh, three years of feedback and received um, a lot of feedback from the community over those years on where they'd like to see service, along with feedback from our bus operators, very important on how our routes can improve for them and from our customers from an operational and safety perspective. We asked our staff to analyze the service area with consultant support to determine what heart does well and should continue, and then places where demand is increasing and where we could do more, and also where we need to make changes based on how the entire county has changed. Uh, we're also trying to address our long-term financial stability in a time of a lot of uncertainty based on the funding of the agency. Uh, we have to plan for how the economy is going to react through this pandemic, what will or won't happen with the voter approved transportation surtax, and we still have a very underfunded budget that we have faced for a long time. 
So uh, another question um, that's sort of been very fluid during this time, um, when will Hart go back to a normal bus schedule? Uh, right now, we are on a modified Sunday service, and we just restored our core routes to the regular schedule last month. So at this time, there's no time frame unfortunately, for restoring additional routes. However, we're still monitoring demand every day and staffing levels. And these proposed service modifications would be based on our regular service levels, not based on COVID-19. Uh, this is a question we got fairly often as well. Is it safe for me to ride hard again? Um, the answer is yes. HART has had safety measures in place since the beginning of the pandemic. We have disinfection that occurs daily. We have staggered seating on board and we require face coverings for riders and our operators. We've actually given out free face coverings available at MTC and UATC. We've handed out 15,000 so far, um, thanks to FDOT and the city of Tampa. And you can check out our blog at goheart.blogspot.com to see all the ways that we've taken to reduce the spread of COVID-19. So this point, we're, um, we're live, just to remind you, um, we still have the floor open. If you're going to send us a comment in, um, this is the time to do it right now. We can, uh, we can take those comments now. So go ahead and let us know what you're thinking and... Um, Justin, uh, we're going to toss it back over to you and kind of uh, see if you can answer some of those questions for us. Sure. So I know there was some confusion, uh, maybe with the state's orders uh, recently related to masks, but we are still requiring them on our board, our buses. So we just want to remind everybody that definitely bring a mask, wear your masks. Uh, it's the right thing to do. And we're still uh, we're still sticking to that policy for now. Um, not seeing any questions rolling in quite yet. So maybe everybody's down celebrating with the lightning. I know that a few of us are headed that way soon. So, um, anything else you think we should touch on Carson? Um, since we don't have any questions coming in, I, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, if you think of something later, uh, maybe you have a bright idea later, um, we want you to weigh in. So um, you can always contact us at a later date. Um, thanks for spending your time with us today. Thanks, Justin, for explaining the changes. It's been awesome uh, for these past uh, few months, seeing the comments that we've gotten and being able to answer them. Um, the last question we would like to answer is, how can someone support a particular service change? We are documenting everything you send in today and uh, until uh, the, the period of time closes on this town hall. After this, if you think of something later, you wanna talk to somebody, you can send us a comment at the heartserviceinput.com webpage. You can go to our One Bus Away mobile app. You can call our customer service at 813-254-4278. Again, that's 254-4278. Uh, you can send us an email. You can even send us some snail mail, some physical mail if you want. Um, you can meet with Heart staff at transit centers. We have been out there for weeks now. Uh, we will be following COVID-19 safety measures and you can attend our final public hearing, virtually or in person. Um, all of these comments that have been submitted so far today or submitted later until October 7th, which I believe is a Tuesday, we uh, will all be valued equally no matter how they are sent in. Uh, your feedback has helped us make these revisions to this plan as we create the final proposed changes. And of course, we're here to listen to your input and to answer all of your questions. So we've got one last poll question before you leave. Um, and we are still open to Q&A if anybody wants to squeeze uh, a question. In. Our last poll question, uh, was this virtual town hall helpful, helpful for you? Uh, we hope it has been. We hope we've been able to share some new information clearly and answer the questions that you've had. But once you submit this poll, that will conclude our town hall. We're gonna give you, give you a few minutes here um, to weigh in on that. We hope that uh, we hope that you got something out of this today. And thanks again, and have a wonderful rest of your day. And of course, we're going to stick around. Uh, if you have any lingering questions, you can hit us up now. So I think I see a few questions that have popped in, and we'll just address those before we wrap up here tonight. 
Uh, one of them was, could you possibly extend the Route 31 south to US 41 at Old 41 by John Sherman Way? Um, I will definitely look into that personally. The Route 31 is already very, very long. So we're trying to think of ways to improve that in the long term. Um, making it longer is not a great solution. And actually, that leads us right to the next question. Uh, so you are keeping Hartflex South County. Uh, yes, the plan is to keep that. And part of the reason we thought about extending the Route 31, but it's already has some operational issues. It, it's late quite a bit. It's a very long route. Um, so we didn't want to add on further by consuming that part of the South County Flex. Um, so those are related questions, but we're actively working on improving things in South County. Um, but yes, we're keeping the South County Flex, and I will look into that request specifically uh, that Zachary submitted. Um, so stay tuned and please submit your email. I'll get back to you on that one uh, and, and look at exactly that location that you're talking about. Um, the last question I see is uh, Route 38 will not go into Walmart. Not a good, not not good for a person in a wheelchair crossing MLK. Um, we hear you on that concern, and we're going to be working with our ADA team to make sure that the facility facilities are adequate for the bus to pass through and not go into MLK. If we think that it is a, too much of an ADA issue, we'll reconsider that. Um, but thank you for mentioning it. It's definitely at the front of our minds, um, and we'll be working with our safety review team and ADA folks to, uh, to address that concern as well. Um, seeing nothing further, I think uh, I can pass it back to Carson and we can probably wrap this up. Great, great questions. Thanks for joining us. And again, have a great night. We'll see you. Thank you.